Hello, in this video, I'm going to be ranking all the IV biology resources that I've used. I decided to do this video because I noticed that for IV biology, no matter how good or bad your teacher is, the students still have to spend a large amount of time on um, looking at the content over and over again and commit it to memory. With that said, it's very important to use the right resources at the right time in order to maximize the effectiveness of studying. And in this video, I'll be ranking the all the IV resources I've used used based on how useful I think it is basically and also talk about the strengths and weaknesses of each resource I've used. So moving on to my screen recording, I made a tier list and included images of all the IB uh, bio resources. Best resource I've used should uh, be placed on the red column on the top while the worst resources should be placed on the bottom in the blue column. Let's get started. We're going to start from the left. So the first one with this ninja logo is bio ninja so bio ninja in case you don't know it's a self-made website by i'm not sure who made it but it's it's not an actual textbook but someone made it and it, it's a free website that's made based on the ib biology syllabus i use this resource a lot uh, this is probably the most used ib bio resource that i've ever used and the reason is that I really like that the content is organized in bullet form so it's almost like a mark scheme and so at first glance it makes it very easy to just see exactly what you need to memorize and what I noticed from doing past papers and then looking at Bio Ninja is that a lot of the content in Bio Ninja is very similar to the past papers and I don't know if this is because they made the web page based on existing past papers or that they just happen to predict the mark schemes very well but either way Way, it's like you can almost like directly see how the mark scheme is going to look like without flipping through all the IB documents and past papers so this is what I found very useful and they organize um, all the content based on the syllabus target in the IB guide this is what I very like about it however towards the end of studying IB bio so towards the end of second year I recommended this resource to my friend and this friend of mine she used Cognity which is another online textbook more as she read bio ninja she started to notice some mistakes made and we discussed on these mistakes and did some research and yes indeed it is wrong I guess because it's a self-made website it is inevitable that there will be some mistakes yeah but this is something to be aware of if you're using this resource but other than that I think it's a very good resource I like the diagrams and there's some animated videos however I think it does lack some actual electron micrographs which is my weakness in doing paper one especially so for this one I think I'm going to put it in a love-hate relationship because I do like it but then there are some limitations to it but other than that I think it is a very good resource so next I'm going to move on to this just the smart prep flashcards. In order to access this, you actually have to purchase it. My school happened to purchase some of these like physical flashcards, so we have them accessible in class. So I just borrowed some to be able to study with it before the exam. So I only started using this towards the end of the second year of IB year 2. And I guess it is the best time to use it because you're not supposed to use this resource as a method of understanding and getting the big picture. You should use this resource to like quiz yourself before the exam and do active recall. My experience with this is that I do really like it. It's very pretty and organized and all the questions it included touched on almost every aspect of the IB syllabus topic which is very good. However, it does trigger me sometimes when <laughs> one of the flashcards is like a question ends in a question mark because it, it, it's not IB style anymore. They do have some IB command term like type of questions but they also have questions that ends in question mark that apparently they wrote themselves. And for most of it, it's uh, very good but for some of it, I think there's not enough details to it and um, the questions that they made even though they touched on all the syllabus topics I feel like uh, for some of the questions they could be more specific enough to test on more details within the syllabus target so I'm going to put it in the I'm not sure but I think yeah but in terms of like using this I, I really think like memorizing the answers on the flashcards can really help you on prepare for exams however I don't think it's enough to just memorize the flashcards like because the details are not that good so you have to still look into other types of resources 
So next, let's look at Biology for Life. Biology for Life is not an official IB textbook or resource, but it's made by a very experienced biology teacher located in the United States. So if you go into biologyforlife.com, the first page you'll see her bio. In my opinion, this is like one of the best resources out there because it not only included all the content, it also included all the resources and tips and like ideas for IAs so I find that very very helpful in terms of like not only in studying the content but also in terms of writing my IA. How the content is organized in this website is that for each subtopic she has a list of IB command term type of question that she wrote and if you click into the link or something it might lead to the answer or she also organized it in Quizlet where you can just like use Quizlet to study. I rely on this resource a lot especially like right before my exam because in my opinion it has all the enough details and it's very organized it touched on all the aspects of the syllabus uh, which in my opinion is fantastic and so for this one I was just say like just memorize <laughs> yeah and I forgot to mention like all the answers like from biology for light is made from the IB Oxford biology textbook like which is this one the blue parrot textbook with that said the blue parrot textbook is one of the most credible IB bio like resource because it's one of the only textbook that was made in cooperation with IB. For this textbook, they organized the content based on the syllabus target in the IB bio guide, and which I find that very helpful because I can see exactly like what I need to know for each subtopic. And on top of that, at the end of every chapter, they, they included database questions. And I really like these database questions because they're hard. Um, they present data in ways that I've never seen before and I think it's very good in terms of like challenging you to think like differently and interpret different types of graph and which I think prepares you very well for the exam. So for this one, I'll just say like just sort of like memorize it but in order to memorize the content in the IB Oxford textbook, it's better to use biology for life basically. And since we mentioned the IB Oxford textbook, another textbook that comes along with it is the IB Oxford study guide and this study guide is basically made along with this textbook and basically just condenses all the information in that textbook into less like amount of pages. It's condensed but in my opinion it's too compact in that like I, I cannot visualize directly what I need to know because everything is put in chunks of paragraphs. This is one aspect I don't like. However, I do like all the end of chapter questions because unlike the IB Oxford textbook, this study guide, they included like factual type of questions that uses IB command terms. And they also included a lot of electron micrographs, which in my opinion is like amazing. So this is a uh, resource I use a lot especially like when it's very close to my exam but i don't use it when i try to get the big picture understanding and also the diagrams in the study guide is also very clean and detailed so i think it's just like yeah just memorize it like there's nothing you can do for bio you really just have to like commit everything you know to memory so next we'll look at alex lee so alex lee is basically a youtuber and then he made videos for practically like all the IB bio topics. I don't rely on his videos a lot. I only use it sometimes uh, when I don't understand a topic and I need someone to explain it to me. But whenever I use it, he always explains it so nicely and like slowly for me to understand. However, in terms of how detailed the video is, like in terms of like the things you need to know for exams, I'm not sure about that because I didn't watch all his videos. So I don't think I have a say in that. And furthermore, uh, because it's only a video, I don't think it's the best resource uh, in preparation for exams because if you just watch this video before exam you're just passively looking at all the things you've learned before and not actively recalling so I think I'm go going to put this under I'm not so sure yeah because I feel like um, I cannot say it's too vague but, like without watching all this video so another youtuber is Cheryl Hickman and Cheryl Hickman, she also made videos on almost all the IB topics. I feel like her videos compared to Alex Lee's is less detailed though. Um, but again, I didn't watch all her videos. I only watch her videos when I see something from Alex Lee's video that I still don't understand and I need another perspective. But she explains it in like very simple terms like for you to understand very well. But I don't think like memorizing her videos and what she said in her videos is good enough to prepare you for exams. And so I think I'm also going to put this under I'm not so sure because I don't think I can judge like all her videos just from the five or six videos I've watched 
by her in my entire IB like course. So next we're going to talk about in thinking. So in thinking is made by a group of like IB examiners, IB teachers, I guess. It's not an official IB resource, but then a lot of people rely on it. And I know my teacher um, uses a lot of resources from InThinking, so they have like almost like practice papers or quizzes that the IB um, teachers wrote together for each like large topic. And they also have like um, a, all the A3 revision sheet papers for each topic. And just to clarify, I never learned anything from InThinking. I only used like the resources in InThinking like to do my revision. So what I found from the resource is that like the quizzes and papers is that they, they are in my opinion like weirdly specific and like they're not that similar to IB past papers. On the surface level they might look that they're similar but if you look at the IB mark schemes and everything I don't think it's that well written. So even though I do their past papers I don't rely on it as much and just in my opinion the questions are weird. And some of them, I feel like, for example, th what in topic five, they ask us to construct a cladogram like from scratch. However, I don't think that's a requirement for the IB. For the A3 revision sheet papers, um, some people find it useful, but in my opinion, I don't find it useful because one topic is like a lot of information. And I, in my opinion, it's, it's impossible to condense like all the information in one like chapter or one topic into one A3 paper. So in my opinion, like just doing that A3 paper doesn't really help me. So I think I'm going to put it in I'm not so sure because like it's not too vague and I, I don't I can't say that it's too vague because like I never looked at like their textbook before um but then from doing the papers they provided I don't really like it so yeah IB Pearson textbook so I know this textbook from IB Cole like in his video on like how to self-study and get a 7 in biology his video mentioned uh, IB Pearson textbook and what he said is that he thinks this um, textbook is very good for like overall big picture understanding and so I tried to follow his strategy and like use this textbook first to get a bigger picture understanding but it doesn't speak to me like uh, I feel like I'm the type of person I need to know exactly what I need to know for exam so with all the like extra information like to get a embedded to get a big picture understanding I just didn't like it and it was all organized in chunks of paragraphs which again like I don't think um, it's like good for my learning because I might be a visual learner and I just need to see exactly like bullet points there so yeah so for this textbook I wouldn't say it's like too vague or not good or anything it just doesn't like work for me as well so I I, I, I'm just gonna put in I'm not so sure. I'm putting everything in I'm not so sure because there's some like um, resources that I didn't like use a lot and I feel bad for it like saying that it's not enough details or anything. Um, yeah. The next one is the Pearson Essential textbook and so the this textbook is basically made from the Pearson textbook and for this one, it's much more condensed and it's all almost all in bullet point forms, I remember. There are some bullet points, some paragraphs, but then it's much more easier to read. And I remember I relied on this textbook a lot, like in the beginning of my IB like program, but then I stopped using it because I've come to notice how it's not detailed enough in order to like get a very good grade. Um, but sometimes when I still when I don't understand a specific like topic I would still go into this textbook and look at it because it really does like explain everything in very simple terms so I think I'm, I'm gonna put this in like too vague not enough details like because this one I know for sure that it's too vague or that is there's like not enough details so that's why I stopped using it um, but then everything else it's like pretty good so that's why I still like look into it sometimes but not all the time so the next one is this like Cambridge textbook um, for this one, again, I, I did use it a lot, but I remember I still kept this textbook, like the digital PDF file of this textbook, and still looked at it because like its first chapter is like statistical analysis, which is very useful for um, IA, and I don't think like such chapter is included in any other IB textbooks I've seen, uh, except for maybe Cognity, where there's a separate section on IA. So that's why I still like have this text and I still use it sometimes. But then I never looked into the context section. So I'm afraid I have to put this in. Um, 
I'm not so sure again. But mm, in thinking, maybe I should move it upwards. Maybe yeah, maybe I should put it in thinking up like upwards because I've used like in thinking for other subjects like psychology and it's awesome. But for this one, the, I just found the questions and the revision sheets like weird. So that's the only reason why. So last three. Um, this one is Bionology. I can't find a logo of it, so this is just a screenshot on like what it looks like. I never used this like source directly, but one of my bio teachers like often included his like work in his PPT. He finds it useful, and I find it useful to visualize like things like on electron micrographs and in different ways because it does like present information in a different way as compared to textbook. Um, but I've never used it like directly before, but I often seen like his images, um, diagrams, like micrographs, like annotated micrographs being used. I'm afraid I have to put this one, I'm not so sure because I didn't use it as much, so I really can't like give it a very accurate ranking. But I think I'm gonna put it there. So the next one is Cognity. So Cognity I actually use um, and not only for bio but also for like chemistry, math and psychology. And so we started using Cognity because it was doing online learning and this is like a, basically an IB online textbook and our teacher can see like our progress in reading all the pages and web pages. But for this one, for bio, however, I don't rely on it as much. I still skim through it and everything. But the reason I don't rely on it is because like I don't like how it's in paragraph form again. They have a lot of questions that like quiz you on the topic but some of it, it really didn't feel like to be IB styled and it, it's like weirdly specific to what they included in their web page if that makes any sense. But I still looked at like some of the questions like towards the end when I'm preparing for my exams because I think it really helps me to like fill in the gaps of my knowledge from what I learned in like all the other textbooks like Bio Ninja and like the Oxford textbook. And Cognity, another strength is that they have very like condensed and like detailed diagrams that you can't like rely on. And as compared to Bio Ninja, some of Bio Ninja's um, diagrams are a bit like vague in my opinion. Like there's not enough details. I guess I'll put it in love-hate relationship because like Cognity sometimes like they still have a lot of details uh, that I don't think will be tested. But then I guess that's just how textbook works. So I'm going to put it there. And for the last one. IB documents. This is where you find all the past papers and all the mark schemes. For this one, like, there's no hesitation. Just like straight up, just memorize this. Because like, for IB bio, sometimes it's very hard to like predict what the mark scheme wants. You might encounter cases where what you said is correct, but it's not included in the mark scheme. So the examiner might not be able to give you the mark. But I'm not really sure how like they do give us the marks, like if you mention something that's correct but not in the mark scheme. So I don't know how that works. But then doing like all the past papers really help you like to get a hang of what the IB wants. And IB gives like reoccurring questions. So for instance, like something like list the features of artery, veins, and capillaries, like they might come up more than once. If that's the case, then if you have done any past papers, it's very helpful. You can just like regurgitate the past papers like onto like your exam paper and then you can be pretty much sure that it's correct. Here I stress the importance of doing IB past papers. It's so important. Um, no matter what textbooks you are using, you have to do IB past papers because that's the only way to know what the IB really wants. So that's it for my ranking for all the IB bio resources I've used. Please let me know if I forgot to include any resources because that's definitely not all. And please let me know if you like agree or disagree with my rankings because this ranking is just based on like what works for me and my studying style. So I hope this video helped um, anyone out there in terms of like choosing the right textbook to use. And I hope someone resonates with me on some of the things that I said. And so thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.